What is the impact of melting ice in the polar north on weather in Europe? Hello friends, Jim here. Melting ice in the polar north drives weather in Europe. Influxes of meltwater into the North Atlantic eventually lead to warmer and drier conditions over Europe. Now, I will admit, when I saw this statement, I was like, huh? Because the thinking is that if you have freshwater input, you're going to slow down AMOC. You're going to disrupt the North Atlantic drift. And that North Atlantic drift is what brings the warm conditions, warm temperatures to Europe, especially to like Iceland, the Scandinavian countries, the UK, right? And that you, you would end up having a sharper gradient than that you would expect to have cooler air temperatures. Now they're saying no warmer and drier conditions over Europe. Well, this, as you might imagine, caught my attention. So what are they saying? How did they justify that? Steady ice loss in the Arctic and South Arctic is injecting enormous quantities of meltwater in the North Atlantic Ocean. We know that's taking place. Researchers have now shown how all that fresh water ultimately drives more extreme summer weather over Europe. These results might enable better long-term weather predictions in Europe. Okay, so it seems to be focusing on summer. Every year, the Arctic and Subarctic lose several hundred cubic kilometers on average of both sea ice and glacial ice due to rising temperatures. Fresh water liberated by all that melting eventually enters the North Atlantic where it aggregates, right? Fresh water lenses, we, we call them, they form fresh water lenses. Some of these fresh water lenses can measure thousands of kilometers in extent and several tens of meters deep in the, in the water, especially in wintertime. Fresh water anomalies in the North Atlantic have been shown to precede European heat waves. However, the mechanism of mechanism is unknown, said uh, Marilena Oltzmans, who's an ocean climate scientist at the uh, National Oceanog Oceanography Center in the UK. The question is increasingly relevant given rapidly warming temperatures in the Arctic and recent weather extremes such as heat waves and droughts that have occurred in Europe. So to track the presence of freshwater anomalies, the team used satellite-derived sea surface temperature da data available since 1979. That technique works at Oltzman because temperature and salinity strongly correlated. They decided not to use salinity data to trace freshwater anomalies because such data has been available over large areas only since 2009. And furthermore, many of those measurements are known to be biased. The bias is about the same order of magnitude as the interannual variability. So basically, her implication is that kind of useless. They also combine data on the ocean's temperature, salinity, and currents with atmospheric data tracing winds, pressure, temperature, and precipitation. We all know that uh, Greenland contributes quite a bit of the freshwater uh, input, right? The seasonal signals that th this research team noted were consistent with melting in the summer and then propagation of that meltwater south via ocean currents the following winter. Freshwater anomalies have a pronounced effect at latitudes between 25 degrees north and 65 degrees north, the team showed. That is a wide belt. That's a wide range. By virtue of basically staying in the uppermost layer of the ocean, freshwater anomalies function basically like a barrier, right? You've got a strong halo climb. The freshwater inhibits heat exchange between the deeper ocean and the air. Note, deeper. 
that's accurate to point that out. Thanks to the relative thermal isolation, freshwater anomalies also cool more quickly in the autumn and winter than surrounding water masses. That situation sets up sharp north-south gradients and sea surface temperature, which in turn promote the development of stormy weather and a preponderance of westerly winds along a freshwater anomaly's southern boundary. Now, you would think that as AMOX slows, that is what would set up a strong north-south uh, temperature gradient. You would think that because you don't have that North Atlantic drift moving further north, that the ocean water is cooling off, you expect to see lower sea surface temperatures at high latitudes, but because you no longer have that redistribution of heat energy, you would also see increasing higher you know, sea surface temperatures at lower latitude. That is what you would expect to see. And they're saying, not, not so. Right? So, because of that, as I said, you expect to see not only this, the sharp gradient in the sea surface temperature, but also the sharp gradient in air temperature. So, why are they, why are they uh, uh, claiming otherwise? And this might have a, a bit of a clue to it. Eddies go north. The Gulf Stream is not just a, a, you know, just bang, a shot of water. You have all these eddies that form, that form it and, and pinch off of it. Some of them rotate cyclonically, some of them anti-cyclonically. But they have all these eddies uh, pinching off. Eddies are a major mechanism that facilitate exchanges of whatever between the atmosphere and the ocean. So we get these westerly winds along a freshwater anomaly southern boundary. So these winds then drive pressure changes that form eddies that same winter, Altman and her colleagues found. These swirling bodies of water stretch in a band across the Atlantic and their presence can shift the North Atlantic current. Aha! This is the interesting bit. Their presence can shift the North Atlantic current. This is different than the North Atlantic drift. The North Atlantic drift is a branch that moved to high latitudes. The North Atlantic current is eastward flowing extension of the warm Gulf Stream. Basically, it's the northern flow of the North Atlantic gyra. And eventually it turns southward along the, it becomes a canary current as it moves past the Azores and the Canary Islands off, uh, you know, Western Africa. And then returns along the southern edge to form that gyra. So now they're saying that this is being moved northward. It's still moving overall eastward, but it's shifted northward. And it shifts to the north by several hundred kilometers. It's at an anomalously northward location. Okay. My reaction? Wow! This is mind-blowing. When westerly winds blow the following summer, they follow the temperature front between the now-shifted North Atlantic current and colder subpolar waters that result from the AMOX slowing down and hence the North Atlantic drift slowing down. So even though it, the, it, the implication here, what they're suggesting is that you know, we would expect you know, a, a more sequestration of colder sea surface temperatures and air temperatures to the north and kind of stuck there and the warmer temperatures 
and sea surface temperatures to the south, kind of stuck there because the North Atlantic drift is slowing. But now they're saying that the North Atlantic current shifts northward. Now, the, I did do a video some time ago that gyros appear to be moving northward or shifting northward. This might be related. So by this shifting northward by several hundred kilometers, that's not insignificant, that could help bring warmer conditions, if nothing more, to at least uh, southern central Europe. This is amazing. I'm going to repeat this again uh, before I forget to mention this. Oceans drive the climate. And here we're seeing this. This is mind-blowing. And I wanted to actually do the deep dive on this paper, but it's uh, behind a paywall. So, sorry. So when westerly winds blow the following summer, they follow this temperature front between the now shifted North Atlantic current and cold as polar water. The location of the freshwater anomaly in winter has a lot of implications for the location of winds in subsequent summers. And those same winds are deflected even farther north where they make landfall over Europe, the research has found. All that northward deflection forms atmospheric anomalies associated with high pressure systems, which are in turn linked to warmer and drier weather patterns. When Altman and her colleagues focused on the 10 warmest and coldest summers in Europe over the past four decades, they found that warmer summers tended to follow winters characterized by larger freshwater anomalies, colder freshwater anomalies, and stronger northward deflection of westerly winds. Given that rates of melting in the Arctic and subarctic are likely to increase in the future, it makes sense that warmer conditions in Europe will also be on the rise. That will be particularly true in more southerly regions, as I just mentioned a few moments ago. Southern Europe will become warmer and drier, no question. These findings offer an important way forward when it comes to predicting weather in Europe because the drivers of conditions in June, July, and August in cities such as Barcelona, Spain, and London are set in motion many months prior should be possible to make long-term weather forecasts. European summer weather is predictable, at least a winter in advance. These results can help us understand some of the impacts of future climate change, said Melissa Gervais, a climate dynamicist at Penn State U, not Bolt. And it is the incredible utility to such weather predictions. If I'm a farmer and I know I'm going to be experiencing heat and drought, I might change what crops I have. Think about my irrigation strategy. Altman and her colleagues hope to expand their analysis of freshwater anomalies that occur in the North Pacific. Similar weather forcing might also be occurring over parts of the US and Canada. There are so many open questions. This is mind blowing folks. This is something we need to keep an eye on. This is calling into question. Even some of the things I've been saying. I've been saying that, you know, AMOX slowing down will lead to regional cooling in the North Atlantic. Well, I may have to uh, reassess and perhaps qualify that to a cooling in perhaps central to northern Europe only. But the, the notion of AMOX slowing leading to temperature gradient is still there. But now we seem to have a perhaps a somewhat compensatory mechanism. It's early at this stage, but this is definitely something to keep an eye on. And this, this uh, blew my socks off. So, wow, very interesting. So, stay tuned. Until next time.